Hello. Hey, Andy. Great to see you. All right. Yeah, good to see you, Brian. All right, so it is Friday, uh, the 19th of April uh, over here, and uh, Thursday evening uh, from on, on your end. And uh, very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to the audience. A very warm welcome. Uh, let's just jump straight into it. Uh, we're going to talk about the Bitcoin halving, which is happening in less than 24 hours. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a crazy ride. Uh, you know, we went to as high as 73.6K on most exchanges back on March 14th, but we've seen kind of a five week retrace attempts to climb back up above 70K and even combat that new all time high uh, before failing and, and kind of crashing back down. Now, it hasn't been a massive crash, but it's been enough to cause quite a bit of FUD and change the context of how this having is being perceived. It was euphoric throughout most of the year. And then all of a sudden, people are now kind of diminishing the importance of it because prices have retraced. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, and it's um, it's interesting because uh, I, I think um, we are where we were maybe a couple of weeks ago, uh, prices price wise. Yeah, yeah, we are. I just started sharing my screen here, and you can see the the weekly returns have been pretty abysmal. In fact, at the time of this recording, which is around six forty p.m. PST where I am in, in on the west coast of the US, uh, Bitcoin's dropped down to 61.5K, Ethereum's back below 3K, just a sea of red all over the place with a few exceptions. Um, and if we go to the 30 day, suddenly we are not seeing such a bad picture. Bitcoin is actually right back at about the exact same point in which it was back on March 17th or 18th or so. Uh, 61 and a half K just below 62 K was where we were then. And after all of the crazy volatility and attempts to get back to that all time high, we're right back at kind of square one from one month ago. So it's funny because at that point, everyone was very euphoric at 61.5 K because we hadn't seen those prices since 2021. And now as we've retraced back to 61.5 K, suddenly people are <coughs> uh, disappointed at this price level so it's funny what uh, a month of time can change yeah yeah absolutely it's um it's it's yeah i i, I think if you know that I, I feel the longer um in this space you've been in uh the kind of less you will feel uh with the volatility uh, when you first get into this space yeah i mean you, you know your, your your heart goes up and your heart goes down and it goes up uh, along with the Bitcoin price, but you know, after uh, you know being in, in in this long enough, you it's 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 like man, it's just another day in Bitcoin, right? Another day in crypto. <laughs> totally, yeah. It's funny how you describe that. I I've often equated time spent in investing the same way it's as as time spent on the planet, because as you age and you're an adult, you have those same small things that are happening to you, and as as an adult, that may have happened to you as a kid but you're more immune to it because you've experienced the ebbs and flows of life. And I think that's kind of what investing is, is you go through enough time where these, these big fluctuations do not impact you the way they used to. So I, there's, a, there's a psychology and philosophy to investing that a lot of experienced traders preach, but until you actually experience it, you're always going to have uh, a bit of fear when you see these types of big dips occur. And that's, you know, what we're seeing a lot in terms of the social commentary on markets right now, heading into these final few hours before the halving. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, which, which I guess, uh, you know, that there's probably a lot of uh, new people coming into the asset class, a lot of, uh, people who may have not uh, dabbled in it um, and it's their first time, you know, and, and they're new. Yeah, undoubtedly that's true, but surprisingly it's not as much as you would think. Uh, most of the people flooding into crypto 
we're coming in around the beginning of the month or month of March, I should, I should say, uh, you can see the amount of buy calls and sell calls that were especially erupting about a week before the all-time high hit, March 4th, 5th mm -hmm. and 6th or so. Um, in fact, it was a lot of sell calls in particular, and we've talked about it before, Andy, when you see people being more negative toward crypto, that increases the probability of prices climbing, and that's what happened. And suddenly you weren't seeing a lot of red bars indicating these sell calls here as the all-time high occurred, and that increased the probability of us correcting. And we've seen a few different, you know, polarized moments here around the turn of the month to April, some big buy and sell calls forming right here, buy the dip call that didn't really work out as it usually doesn't for the crowd. Um, yeah. And now we're here at, at kind of the low end of this range we've been on, uh, threatening to go below 60K again. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what's the, what is the sentiment uh, at this time? Like what, what, what are we seeing currently? Yeah, so we've got a few things we can look at. Um, one thing that's been catching my eye is the amount of mentions of bull market, right? Which is obviously going to be a, an optimistic or bullish type of term. And you can see that ever since around the end of April, the mentions of us being in a bull market have fallen off a cliff. Uh, even before the all-time high hit, there was less and less discussion of it. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the mentions of bear market were kind of dropping also, but right about a week and a half ago, 12 days ago, we started seeing a tremendous amount of bear market calls indicating that the crowd is becoming quite bearish. So bear market here, bull market here, pretty big difference in the amount of people perceiving the markets in a, a bullish context versus a bearish context. That is interesting. That is cool. Yeah. And we can also, of course, look at our very popular weighted sentiment indicator. Let me go down mm -hmm. here to that metric. And you can see, uh, I would ignore this, this less than one day sample size of the current week. But if you look at the past one, two, three, four, five weeks here, you can clearly see that people were showing a bearish bias for quite a while now, right after Bitcoin started to correct and take down the rest of the markets with it. So yeah, we're seeing a bit of optimism now. I presume it's just from the last almost 24 hours or so of people mentioning the fact that the halving is about to arrive. But um, I still would would call this kind of a, a bearish sign considering we had five straight weeks of less discussion about Bitcoin and the discussion that has been going on has had a predominant negative bias to it compared to usual. Okay, okay. that's interesting. <clears throat> it's, um, I, I, I was, uh, so we, we had an event last night um, talking about the Bitcoin having as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had to, <clears throat> I had to prepare, uh, you know, my, my deck of slides. And um, what was interesting is from um, from what we saw since the um, the, the the ETFs were <clears throat> um, went live, uh, I think January 11th to now, um, I, I did a comparison between the number of Bitcoin purchased uh, by the ETFs versus the the amount of Bitcoins mined. And um, it was um, pretty interesting. So those, the purchase, uh, the number of Bitcoins purchased were over 200,000 Bitcoins. Um, and the number of Bitcoins produced by the miners um, were 74,000. Wow. So there were, yeah, that, 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 there were a lot more Bitcoins purchased than, um, than they were produced. So it's, um, it's interesting. Yeah, that is a fascinating development. Um, you know, I, I try to keep a vague uh, pulse on the miners and how those are impacting crypto. And obviously with the halving, it's uh, in the forefront right now as to how interested the miners are going to continue being uh, in mining Bitcoin now that the difficulty is going to double. And theoretically, that's going to make 
the new existing Bitcoin entering circulation a little more scarce. So it's probably not something we're going to see the effects of until after the halving. Um, if anything, miners might be, you know, being more aggressive in mining as much as they can right before the halving while it's uh, half as difficult. But um, certainly it hasn't really had a positive impact on prices yet. Uh, what I, I do think has had a, an impact on prices has been the funding rate, the amount of longs um, from margined and leveraged positions that were forming right up to the all-time high. They dropped off in mid-March, came back up high when we saw a rebound and it was teasing a new all-time high at the end of March. And then mm -hmm. all of those got liquidated, not all, but many got liquidated. Funding rate got flat again. We see this spike in longs one more time. They get liquidated. And now we're starting to see the most prevalent existence of shorts since early February, probably even beyond that. I'd say this is probably the biggest notable spike in them from a consistent standpoint since the very beginning of the year here, the opening week of 2024. Um, and that's a good sign. We actually want to see more shorts and less longs. So this this green here, it's not even staying at neutral anymore. It's starting to go below that as short uh, perpetual contract rates are getting more and more uh, visible. So I, I think this is a good thing. It obviously backs up the notion that the crowd is rather bearish. And I wouldn't be surprised if there is some relief bounce, perhaps right at or right after the time of the halving uh, that ends up liquidating these shorts and the funding rate gets neutral again, kind of like we saw at the beginning of April. Mm, yeah, that's interesting. But funding rate it's, is essentially uh, like how people are putting their money where their mouth is, regardless of what they're saying on social media. This is an actual yep. measurement of how they're placing their bets. Yep. Yep. And this is, um, it's interesting how, how quickly the, uh, or how fickle, I guess the the crowd is. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's, there's a, a major recency bias, like I mentioned. I mean, 61.5K was an amazing market price a month ago, according to the crowd, and now it's a disappointing one. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you can see whales too. I, I'll, I'll transition over to them for a moment. You can see that there were just okay. tons and tons of transactions, clearly profit taking going on here right up to the all time high with these, especially hundred thousand dollar or more bars. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing on the million dollar or more, both were kind of peaking around this time and then they've dropped off ever since uh, indicating there's a little more kind of shoulder shrugging going on from the whales as they're waiting for the next big move. I find that fascinating as well. And if we look at <clears throat> the amount of Bitcoin held by what we deem sharks and whales, you know, addresses that are capable of making uh, transactions that are valued at $100,000 or more. We look at the 10 to 10,000 BTC tier uh, from a supply held standpoint, uh, like percentage basis, and just like a total amount of Bitcoin basis. Because obviously miners, as new coins come in, they're going to make a slight difference. I actually like this line the most, the absolute amount seems to have the most correlation with where prices go next. Uh, you can mm -hmm. definitely see the impact, you know, from December through January when we had kind of a temporary uh, drop uh, during the bull cycle that was happening since mid-October. And you can see that they actually dropped, if I drag my mouse here and hold down shift, they dropped about 102,000 BTC during this six-week stretch or so. And then after that six week stretch, they've been on a massive accumulation uh, pattern for the past three months where they've accumulated about 210,000, adding about 1.62% to their existing supply that they had on January 21st. That, that's a really good sign to me, especially when you're seeing, you know, prices doing this, right? The, yeah. These green bars are the bit price of Bitcoin. And then yep. the amount held, if we just take this part right here, they're going up. Yep. That's that's a pretty classic yep. bullish divergence to me. 
And this isn't just any metric. This is one of our primary metrics that we usually look to to see where markets are likely to head next. And whales and sharks are always going to be in control of the markets. And if they continue to accumulate, don't be surprised if a lot of these bearish traders get left in the dust and, and regret their decisions. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And, and that's usually the case, isn't it? it you know, it, it's the case in, in traditional markets. It's the case in crypto. It doesn't matter, um, uh, you know, what asset class you're, you're, you're looking at. The whales um, are usually accumulating uh, when, when all the retailers or, or the whole market sentiment is bearish. And, yeah. then, um, and then, and they they will sell um, to you when when the market sentiment is 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 bullish. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly yeah. right. So we're we're kind of just keeping an eye on whether they're going to continue their accumulation here or start to, you know, at least at least show a little bit of profit taking. But up until the halving, it doesn't look like they've shown any interest in dropping their their coins. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really interesting. You, you know, um, in in the news, um, I've seen that there's been, uh, you know, someone that <clears throat> uh, that social media is called Mister One Hundred. He's been accumulating Bitcoin in uh, one hundred Bitcoin tranches, um, and he's been doing that since I think uh, November twenty twenty two. And apparently, uh, apparently, uh, you know, he can do. A, up to five tranches in the day uh, of, of buying Bitcoin um, in 100 tranches. So um, that's interesting. Uh, we can check out the mentions of him. I, I had this screen open that just shows the very predictable increase uh, in commentary related to the having. So no surprise that it's dominating conversations now. But let's see if there's any added uh, mentions related to Mr. 100. We'll try a few different combos here. Mr. 100 or Mr. and 100 or Mr. with a period and 100. Let's try all those combined. Ah, it doesn't look like there's anything special. So the crowd isn't okay. talking about it much. Maybe if we go back to November, ah, not too much. It looks like most uh, of the mentions were happening in the January dip all the way up until late February. So yeah, I, I think we could keep an eye on him for you and talk about what he's been doing going into our next show. Yeah. Yeah. That, that'd be interesting. Um, Cause I, I think some of the commentary is saying that it could be a, a nation state that is trying to keep a lid on it, but you know, they're accumulating, uh, accumulating Bitcoin. Is he anonymous or is he someone who identifies himself? <laughs> No, it, it's an anon it's anonymous. Someone actually uh, figured out. Oh, look, this address it keeps adding Bitcoin in tranches of one hundred. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that actually so that, makes that... me makes me curious <laughs> what the top transactions are. I wonder if there's any. I don't think the that the amount of one hundred BTC would qualify as any of the top transactions over the past month because there's way way higher ones that are consistently yeah. happening. But we can actually yeah. look on Santiment. We haven't really done this too much on our shows, Andy, but we can see the largest values over time, uh, over the past 30 wow. days, in terms of BTC yeah. transactions. You can see March 22nd was a huge day. This was yeah. right about there. So this appeared to likely be some accumulation. Um, I can actually just take the transaction volume of BTC in USD and just put it right above here. So this is the transaction volume related to these top transactions per day. I'll put it on a, yeah, it's on daily already. So the 22nd, yeah, nothing too special on this day. Most of the big spikes happened a little over a month ago at the beginning of March. Um, a few on April 2nd, this one happened yesterday. So this was, this is actually a marked address. It, it's on, so this was 19,249 BTC moving to Binance, which was likely a red flag that could have mm -hmm. explained the upcoming drop that we're seeing today. I do think that oh. this amount of BTC is enough if it's sold off to easily yeah. send markets spiraling downward. Because that's uh, mm. tens of billions of dollars, if I'm doing the math correct. Yeah. 
So oh, yeah, you can always check out, this is for any asset. Um, you, yeah. can, you can look into the top transactions on a network and see, you know, exactly what the patterns of are, especially if there's coins moving to exchanges, that's very applicable. Cool. Okay. But Thanks. overall, I mean, the supply and exchanges is staying very low, very slight mm -hmm. uptick here that happened yesterday. This could have been due to mm -hmm. that 19K plus tra BTC transaction going to Binance, but uh, it isn't much. Yes. Oh. It's not much at all. <laughs> so is that in percentage or is that in uh, number of Bitcoin? So we actually recommend not paying too much attention to the number because we're still updating okay. that that yep. number in the top left here that's showing 5.3% uh, mm -hmm. of supply and exchanges. We, yes. we acknowledge that that's probably not the true precise number, but based yep. on the addresses we're following, when you mm -hmm. see this number drop, that's based on the yeah. known exchange addresses yeah. that we're aware of. And anything that isn't a known exchange address, when it's moved off of there, we consider it a yeah. non-exchange address. So dropping is still a good sign. Rising is still yeah. a scary sign. Yes. Wow. That's a massive drop over. Huge. Yeah. All yeah, straight very down. much related to March 5th, right before, mm -hmm. like a week before the all-time high occurred. Nice. I'm trying to think if there's anything else, Andy. Is there anything you're focusing on, even going into equities? Because I know that crypto and equities have been quite correlated. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, um, no, the I, I guess the uh, really, usually the, the having uh, whilst media kind of hypes it up to be, quite a huge event um, it's usually a non-event in, in, in a sense that you know the bitcoin network's still going to be here it's still going to be running uh, miner the, the miners are going to still be mining um but you know their rewards will go down so really um after that happens uh it, it's more of a so what are the miners going to do because their costs will still stay the same but you know the the, the amount of rewards will go down so um, I, I guess the smaller ones or the less efficient ones will sometimes shut down. Um, and then the more efficient ones will, will, will keep going on. Uh, so sometimes I think you see a dip in the, in the hash rate uh, in the past, um, uh, uh, past uh, uh, halvings. But other than that, I, I, I think this time around um, where it's slightly, you know, what's different from the other halvings is that you now have the ETFs. So every man and his dog with a stock broking account um, can purchase Bitcoin. Uh, and that's massive liquidity because Bitcoin. it's no longer just uh, uh, limited to the to the crypto people, right? Um, who, who are technically comfortable and savvy to, you know, move coins around and all that. So I, I, I think um, this time around, it's uh, and it, and and you know things in the in tradfi world uh, works a lot slower than than it does in crypto. So um, I, I don't know, like it, it might even be a prolonged and a slower uh, you know bull run. <laughs> yeah, I think that's well said. I mean, a lot of I even saw a popular Reddit post that came out yesterday where someone was reminding the crypto community that the having event is not just a magic a magical date that is going to mark a significant all-time high like most of these events go it's usually the weeks or months leading up to the event where the true you know baking in if you will on the price yeah. occurs and yeah. we really i think in my opinion this is only my opinion but i think that baking in period was pretty much what the, the all-time high was all about five weeks ago. It was people getting ready for the known event that was going to happen on April 19th. It wasn't going to be canceled or changed. People knew about this, you know, a year ago. Um, so yeah. I think that, that the effect of the having already kind of took place and now it's just a foregone conclusion when it happens tomorrow. And then we might see a little bit of a reaction to it based on how, you know, miners uh, react, you know, maybe yep. they'll stop mining so much. Who knows? But um, yeah. at least up until tomorrow, I don't see much change occurring. 
unless a whale or yeah. a shark decides they want it to change. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And and I think to add to the to the miners, um, you know, the smaller, less efficient ones who decide to turn it off, they may turn off their their mining rigs for a while and and decide to come back on, or they may just decide to pack it up. That's it. You know, like uh, uh, this is a, a a big money game, and and I cannot afford to to keep you know increasing uh, hashing capacity and they may end up selling their their miners to the more efficient and larger miners who end up buying those mining rigs and putting the hash power back on so you might see a dip in the in the hash rate and then it may go back up to normal and then some who knows right yeah, yeah. great point great point I, I can't wait to see how how the reaction uh comes down from that group specifically uh, and I also yeah, brought up yeah. this the ZTF dashboard too because you mentioned them. The volume's still cool. been pretty consistent. Um, it, you know, it isn't quite what it was during the weeks right before the all-time high, which was right mm -hmm. about here, and the mm -hmm. a few days after the all-time high when everyone might have been expecting a rebound, and then it kind of dropped off a little bit, but it's still quite you know high at over three billion dollars in volume sometimes up to $5 billion in volume per day. Uh, and that's still much higher than what we were seeing, you know, pre late February when it was more like one to two and a half billion. So the, the ETFs are very alive and well. Uh, money continues to be moved out of GPTC, the old OG ETF that's been around since 2015. And it's going into, you know, BlackRock a little bit, Fidelity is kind of flat, but there's still plenty of inflow days here, more than the outflows. Uh, we've got a lag on the Bitwise info and some of the others. But yeah, it's it, I still see that there's plenty of volume. Keep in mind, volume doesn't mean you know people buying or people selling. This is just the total of all of the buys and sells. But uh, it's at yeah. least showing that there's a lot of act, a lot of activity still there. So people that want exposure to crypto without owning crypto are still very much using these exciting ETFs that have now been around a little over three months. Yeah, and and you know one one thing about the ETFs is is this. Uh, so in tri uh, in in TradFi land, uh, this you know decision making processes take a really long time. But uh, think about it. There are so many uh, asset and fund managers out there who may decide to allocate uh, a one or two percent uh, of Bitcoin into whatever funds that they're managing, uh, which is what I think uh, Ark is doing, and I, and I think uh, Franklin Templeton mentioned that as well that they were going to do that. So when they start doing that, um, they're not going to buy spot Bitcoin; they're going to buy ETFs, um, and they're managing trillions. So when they decide that they're going to allocate, you know, 1% of all their funds to, to have Bitcoin exposure, imagine that wall of money that will come in to buy the ETFs. So, uh, but, but that decision-making process on whether or not to allocate or how, you know, what percentage to allocate uh, to their funds, that takes a long time because they'll have to go through the investment committees, they'll have to debate it out, they'll have to look at the risks and all that. Um, and once that decision's made and, and they move to execution, that's, that's when you'll see it happen. And, and so that's why I think um, it's, it's, it, it's, it's pretty big uh, because now uh, it's the floodgates have been open because like I said, every man and, a, uh, and his dog with a stockbroking account can get access to Bitcoin. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 Can't wait to see how this next month goes so we can touch on just what the impact was uh, in mid-May. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the developments here. I'm checking the prices right now. Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin is is now below 61K and could could be below 60k by the next time by the next hour or so after this show ends but um maybe there will be some opportunities to buy the dip coming up very soon and we'll of course keep the equi equities tracker community updated on that uh you can follow us on sentiment feed on on our twitter slash x uh, and several other platforms but uh just want to remind everyone if you would like to tap into our metrics feel free to go to our pricing page 
which you'll always find at the top right of our Sandbase platform. Sign up for a free account, whatever you want. Get a, you get an automatic free trial when you sign up for any of these uh, before any charges kick in and you can cancel before they kick in. Uh, and use code equities tracker where you'll get 25% off your first purchase. It's a pretty nice deal and uh, it supports both us as well as Andy and the rest of the equities tracker team. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, and it is definitely a worthwhile uh, for you to, to use the, uh, the sentiment platform. It's, it's been a very um, useful tool for myself as well to, to to get the amount of transparency to see what's happening on the on on you know uh, on on the sentiment on you know the sentiment in the market and and also on chain uh, data. Hundred percent. Okay, I think um, yeah, we've come to the end of it. And um, any any final words for the for the audience, Brian? I don't think so, Andy. I think we covered it all. Um, as always, just be you know mindful of your risk. Uh, and make sure you're not overextending right now while the crowd is extra emotional. Uh, it's something that even though we don't give investment advice at Santiment, we're always comfortable giving that recommendation to be safe and cautious and understand your own risk tolerance and don't jump out of that based on emotion. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I echo the the same that, that, that Brian's just mentioned. Uh, stay safe out there uh you know it, you know investing can be very emotional and it is very emotional we are only human it it makes us uh fear and greed is real uh just uh try to sort of be a little bit more introspective and to realize whether you're being driven by either one of those emotions uh when you when you make those decisions and and don't overstretch you know don't borrow money to to invest uh it's 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 never um yeah, uh, you, you you know manage your risks because uh, I, I I saw a, a, a tweet uh, the other day or a post on on X and um, there was someone uh, that had a very uh, had a long position on some meme coin uh, and about a million bucks worth and they were liquidated by the time they woke up and he was feeling suicidal um, and and that's very sad uh, so you know don't don't know like just just know what your risks are uh, how much you are willing to lose uh then yeah that's just yeah don't 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 go overboard just be well like, as yeah. i mentioned yeah yeah well um looking forward to the having event and to seeing what happens next and uh we will see you guys uh next month yeah can't and, wait my um, yeah looking forward to it so thank you again, Brian, for coming on. Thanks for having me as always, Andy. All right. Have a great one. You too. Take care, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.